Okay, good afternoon. This is my presentation on my literature review. The topic was International School Leadership, the Challenges and Successes for the Modern International School Leader. This is for Dr. Wett's EPS 595 self-study class, summer of 2017. So international school leadership, a little bit of an overview. Um, my motivation and research for this and exploration was I've uh, been in teaching for 20 years, and the last five years of which has been overseas and will continue to be overseas probably until retirement. And I will be entering uh, sort of administration duties for the first time in that. So, you know, having seen what is, you know, what what quality leadership looks like from an educator standpoint, I thought to use this self-study time and to really research into the, uh, you know, the nitty gritty nuts and bolts of what makes a great leader uh, specific to the international school stage. So a little bit of overview, leaders in today's international school environment are faced with a loosely defined yet high performance based niche in education. And I thought that was very interesting that it's loosely defined, but yet having said that, the expectations are very high, both within the students, the parents and the community. So my aim was um, to ask the question, what have studies shown regarding the challenges of international education leadership? What successes and best practices are utilized to achieve a thriving, successful international school program? All right, so sort of generalizing, I'm going to sort of zoom out and sort of focus more into the international education uh, section later on. I first looked at Bol Bowman and Deal's Reframing Organizations. This is a general generalized look at what makes uh, successful leaders successful. They speak of using the four frame model and the frames are being structural, HR, human resources, political, and symbolic. And the idea is to understand which frame you fit in as a leader and then start to make sure you tailor the organization to that personality. Um, also within the four frames, whatever usually you fit into one or two of those frames, or that's what you would like to be to fit within two. And you want to identify the common strengths and shortcomings of that, that would make you within those two frames. So you know about those going into it. Uh, some other general, uh, Traits would be to be able to find simplicity and order among the chaos, very prevalent, I guess, in all of education, but especially so in international, um, to find the order amongst the chaos. Staff motivation is a huge uh, issue in any sort of leadership um, duty. Maintaining good quality working conditions and showing and having your daily actions showing that you, you have a commitment to the group and the organization. Great quote I uh, saw here by Lightwood, 2008. As far as we are aware, there is not a single documented case of a school successfully turning around its pupil achievement trajectory in the absence of talented leadership. So in all the studies, <clears throat> obviously teaching is at the top of most uh, attributes that make up a successful school, but all, also the leadership and the administration that uh, that helps foster those teachers do what they do best is usually second or third on the list. So leadership is obviously a crucial step in having a successful school program. <coughs> okay, so looking at leadership within the actual international school setting, very common I noticed that there's always a sense of domestic experience in their home country. Um, the education administrators have spent years gaining experience in their respective country of origin before entering the international school workplace. This gives them a base uh, from which to operate. So they have an idea of why well, things may not be the same, where they're going. They have a base of idea, understanding of you know what is involved, what's entailed, and then they would tailor uh, the specifics based upon the region or country that they're in. Some of the pros uh, just uh, that I saw come up time and time again was the sense of independence. You have less ties that bind. That could be, you know, standardized testing, uh, different uh, community things you had to do, all that. You just have, you're a lot more independent. I guess you could also take that as a negative, which I'll get to later. But um, uh, less removed, um, closer to the classroom. Uh, there's a sense of you're actually, especially if it's in a smaller setting, that 
Um, there's less administrator type, you know, behind the desk duties and it allows you to be closer to the classroom, having a pulse on what's actually happening with the learning and the students. On average, there seems to be better parenting involved. This may just be, you know, the type of jobs that are that the parents would be having in an overseas culture. Uh, but on average, we see better parenting. There would be less press and public relations issues to deal with. This would be probably when compared to more urban uh, domestic like United States schools, public schools and more urban settings, there's a lot less of the press and public PR issues to deal with. Um, some of the negatives, uh, there are less support services, so maybe less curriculum, uh, less sense of a headquarter taking care of all the business side and some of the recruiting issues. If, if you're more of a self-contained international school, a lot of these duties will fall on you and your small staff that you have there which leads to the importance of wearing many hats. You may have to be the counselor, the admissions coordinator, a business manager, and all the other different things that go along with keeping a successful school afloat could be more under your umbrella, depending on the size of the school. Uh, multiple languages and customs. While this can be seen as a, a positive, we would also want to be aware of the negatives, uh, the, the things that you have to deal with. Uh, mul the multiple languages and different customs and cultures can very easily get into clicks uh, common to domestic schools, but obviously a, a little bit different as well. Ed Green uh, was an international educator and administrator at a successful Singaporean school, international school, and he said, in the United States, I was bracketed between well-intended, poorly constructed programs such as No Child Left Behind and the oft-abused value-added assessment movement. I am painfully aware of the privilege we overseas educators in independent international schools enjoy beyond the cold reach of such movements. I thought that was a great quote. Okay, the importance of school leadership on actual student learning. I thought to look at the exemplary school setting and look at what makes them successful. And there are a lot of studies that do just that. They look at a school that is ranked very high in world standings and then go in and sort of ask questions and tear apart what makes that school leadership successful. So uh, in these cultures, there's already a high achievement culture that is prevalent throughout the international school landscape. In general, I think this, the students and the parents uh, understand the need to succeed and do this well. So that sort of comes with the territory. Perception by the staff members of these schools is uh, towards leadership is that leadership would distribute responsibilities adequately, not take it all on themselves or distribute it too thinly. Um, that they're, they would nurture trust with congeniality. They would improve relations between staff and students. That would be a constant thing to be doing. Um, and they would encourage, encourage consistency of classroom practice. That could be in, in grades and evaluation and how the curriculum is uh, supported, how the curriculum is given, uh, differentiation, all those sort of things. There's also an importance of being sensitive and knowledgeable. Uh, with their host country ethos this is very important, uh, depending on the differences between their domestic countries and the host country. All right, some of the things you would want to watch out for or uh, uh, possible cons or pitfalls is, like we said before, there are high parental expectations. This is sometimes due to cultural differences in a lot of the Asian countries. The, you know, education is just seen a little bit differently than a lot of Western countries. Um, there's always a high staff and student turnover. This is something we'll talk about in the next slide. The head of school's precarious position, not knowing that this head of school, how long they've been at this school, and they could be leaving quickly, just like a staff member or a student. And that, that precarious position can sometimes be cause for concern. There's always the over-involvement in, uh, of the membership of board directors or board members. Um, the in-country laws and educational policies, sometimes you have to work within the, your host country's laws, and this can sometimes cause um, some strain. Uh, the, the delivery of the right balance and curriculum with the freedom of, of choice you can do. Do you do AP? Do you do IB? Do you do some host country things? Do you keep it all American? Do you keep it Singaporean? Uh, We've got to make sure you balance all that. Uh, it's very important. And then, of course, the head of school's relationship with the board of governors or board of directors. They could, this could be a this could be a positive or this could be a negative, depending on uh, the situation. But that relationship would be very important, and very crucial, crucial for success. OK, um, 
So numerous studies sought out already successful programs and looked to create questions on their leaders' traits, just like we said before. So some of the questions that I thought were just indicative of quality uh, leadership, just looking at the questions themselves. Questions like, what practices do successful principals use? That's kind of general. Do these practices vary across contexts? What gives rise to successful principal leadership? Under what conditions? Are the effects of such practices heightened or diminished? Which variables effectively link principles influence the student learning? Some of the biggest challenges is, like we said before, teacher retention. Uh, the research showed that there's numerous reasons for leaving. Uh, one, it, the first one is administrative leadership. This could be reasons to stay or reasons to leave. Uh, compensation, which may or may not be in the uh, in the hands of the leadership, being able to deal with that. The working environment. This is something that leadership and administration administration can directly help with. Uh, and then, of course, personal circumstances. So. At first, I looked at how, how do you overcome this phenomenon of teacher retention? Uh, it's when you look at a lot of the numbers and percentages that even at the, the high retaining international schools around the world are more at the at risk percentage in some common U.S. schools. So how do you how do you overcome this phenomenon? You don't. It, I just don't think there's any way. So I kind of re remove the word overcome to curtail. How can you cut down this phenomenon, creating a great working environment? Um, providing, you know, supportive administrative leadership as opposed to, you know, regulatory. And then obviously compensation is, is hugely important. But teacher retention, that's something going in, you know, it has to be a, a high concern to really to try to, to get that retention as high as possible, especially with your, your better and more experienced teachers. Some basics, leaders in education, things that you are a must have. You want to create a positive, engaging school climate. You want to get these the teachers, students, parents, and community members to join that effort as well uh, in creating that school climate. You want to set a direction or a vision for the future constantly. And you want to be able to redesign to strengthen the school culture, build collaboration, and remove any obstacles that get in the way of that success. Um, uh, more importantly, you want to be a developer of people. This, this has to do with the uh, administration around you, your cohort, your, your staff. Uh, your teachers and everyone in the school, students, parents, is uh, just try to develop the people around you um, from the top down. All right, some of my, my references, I was going to point out a few of the key ones that I used a, a lot of. Um, again, I talked about Bowman and Deal. This is just basic leadership reframing uh, and then getting down to the actual leadership side. Um, McCarthy had a lot to say. Uh, this is the evolution of educational leadership prep programs in the U.S how the actual preparation programs have been uh, been developed. And uh, this was a great one. This was sort of basic. This was more of a flyer for, are you looking at going into education around the exhilaration of overseas leadership? Um, had some, some better quotes, and it was a great kind of primer if you were looking to be overseas uh, in a leadership position. Moving on, uh, these were all useful. Uh, this is probably the most useful Slater's understanding principal leadership and international perspective and narrative approach. All right. I think overall this uh, this literature review allowed me to really take a more in-depth look at what I'm going to be getting into. I, I have a lot of, uh, you know, education from the past, but more on the side of the teacher. But looking to move into an admin position, I think this uh, this literature review allowed me to really research and spend a lot of time reading on um, uh, material that I just have not uh, delved into yet. And I thought I found it incredibly useful and rewarding. Thanks a lot.